All the other lads are on. Good evening. This meeting is being recorded. Right. Uh, um, does anybody know how to put Lee as centre screen? No. Okay. Um, Derek, didn't you tell us last time to pin it or something? Three little yeah, pins at the I, top. Yeah, but I can't do it on my phone. I, I oh, fucked right. up. I, I've, oh, hang on. It's all this. <laughs> oh, here we go. You're recording, aren't you? Yeah, I know, but I'm trying. I'm looking for for for. Where's Lee? There's Lee. So if I go to Lee, there. Pen. There we go. Okie doke. Over to you, Lee. Hopefully that's sorted. <laughs> sorted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. Nice right picture of a vice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Well, yeah. Um. Exactly. Yeah. I could say I was a little bit disappointed last time. I did my um some chalk stream patterns, and it was. Can all, you guys, can all you guys mute, mute yourselves because Lee's disappeared? I put him as I pinned him, and some of these people ring him in all sorts here. Uh, Would you like me to record it as well, Derek? He's got he's gone quiet now. But he's really struggling with it today, isn't he? No, no. Uh, yeah. I, I've got just your voice, nothing else. Yeah, that's all, that's all you got. You haven't got me. You're lucky. You haven't got me. You've just got me voice. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> I'll just wait for Derek to come back and then. I'm recording here as well now. Oh, well done. Derek's locked himself out now, but it's done, looks of it. I think Derek has muted himself. Yeah, is he still in, is he still in the meeting or? It, I can see Derek's in the photo, but I can't hear him. Yeah. He is talking. Yeah, he's someone's waving. on the phone to him, I think. Please. He's waving. Oh, ah. someone's waving his fingers at Matt. <laughs> he's gesticulating wildly. <coughs> yeah, plod on, Lee, I think. Plod on. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah. um, like I say, I, I did some chalk stream patterns. I think it was probably about nine, ten weeks ago now. But it was, um, I had real problems with the focus you know it was it was a bit disappointed because the focus didn't come out very well so hopefully the setup i've got now should be a lot better focus um a lot closer so you should be able to see a lot better hopefully um I've, it sort of involves this board basically which is in front of me so it should look really good but it is a bit awkward to tie so um i've got an excuse already really um <laughs> I, i'll talk through i'll talk through all the patterns um as and how I tie them, you know. Hopefully there'll be some interesting sort of ideas and techniques. If you get any questions, um, just shout and um, I'll get cracking. So um, I'll show a finished fly to start off with and we'll talk through what we're gonna do. Cause we're, we're gonna do, it's all gonna be still water nymphs, okay? So, um, so this is the first one we're gonna do. Hopefully you can see that all right. It's basically, it's a deal back, but it's, um, it's a flashback. Lee, uh, can can everybody hear Lee? Because I I can't hear him. Yep. Yeah, yeah we can hear him. Yeah, yeah we can hear him. Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Hear me, Derek. So anyway, so so deal back is um a flashback. So um I've always been led to believe that flashbacks are great where um you have the the, the trout's vision. They have their window and the mirror. So any flies being retrieved out of the window, the, the flashback part of the fly reflects on the mirror, on the surface of the water. So it's like a, mm -hmm. a ping. So that, that's what draws the attention of the fish. So the, that little sparkly bit on the back is catching on the reflection of the mirror and the fish are like, you know, it grabs their attention. So this is, it's a simple fly, the deal back, but um, I've got a few sort of quirky ways of doing it. So I will get cracking with fly number one. So. I'm going to use barbless hooks. I've got some grip nymph hooks. They're really, really nice hooks, these. It is a bit strange because the, 
the sizing is different. So this is a size 14, but it basically equates to a size 12. So, but they're nice, nice nymph hooks, really sharp. Nice, I like the shape to them as well, so. So the first thing um, I used to struggle with years ago, with tying dill backs, was always the beard hackle. So you yeah. basically, you you tie the fly, and then uh, last thing, you'd be sort of either rotating the hook round to try and tie the beard hackle in, or, you know, you could do it, but then you're always trying to chase in tidying up butts and whatnot. And um, some people, they actually get, get it the correct length, cut it, and then tie it in, so you haven't got any, any bits poking out. There are some clever ways of doing it, but what I've done, a lot of people have seen me do it now. Basically, when I tie a deal back now, the beard hackle is the first thing I do. So we get a little bit of thread on, just to get. So this is obviously is um, it's a fluorescent pink thread. So we're gonna have a nice hot head on the fly. So this is a posh deal back because this is actually like cock de leon. So I'm going to line up the tips. And then unzip them off the stem. So I've probably got about 10, 10 fibers there. If you wanted to be really, you know, really line them up, a handy thing I use um like a two 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 uh, rifle case, LR case for like a little hair stacker, which is brilliant for just stacking like you know cock hackle fibers and cock de leon if you want to be you know fussy about it. So anyway, so I'm gonna offer that up for length. So the sort of the bit protruding in front of the eye is basically going to be how long the beard hackle is. So I'm going to tie this in on top of the hook shank. Keep it nice and neat. Couple of quite tight turns. And then I'm going to tease the fibers down either side of the eye and keep winding forwards. And then Hopefully, try and keep it up. so you're maneuvering it underneath the shank. Try and keep it nice and tidy. So there you go. Basically, that's it. The beard hackle is now done. All we've got to do when we finish the fly is fold that back, and we're done. So nice and easy. No bits to trim off at the end. And you'll see but quite a few of the patterns I do tonight. I tie, try and tie hackles in first, and just to make it easier. I think things like this, you know, it helps make a neat head because you're not tying things in last. So I'm just going to get a few more fibres of this Coq de Leon. Don't have to do, use Coq de Leon. I just, I just like it. I like the Pardo. It's a nice <laughs> mottled effect. So I've got the tail. So that, that could do with lining up a little bit better, but I'm going to let it go. So offer it up for length. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to run up a bit. And now I want to do, when I cut the, the beard hackle bit, it was a flat cut. So I'm going to do the same here. So hopefully we end up with a nice smooth base to the fly now. So we've got, there's another, oh yes, yeah, so I knew there was a pesky. There we go. So now we've got a nice smooth base for the fly. Um, now I'm going to do a rib. So I've just got some fine red wire. And this pattern, incidentally, is really good. I don't know why. It's really good for coarse fish. And especially this is a 12, especially in 14s. It's a really good fly for coarse fish. And now our, our flashback, which I'm going to use some ice blue pearl. This is a medium. I'm just going to cut off a strand of that. And tie that in on top of the shank. Nice and tidy. And then our body, which is a peacock curl. This is some really nice, fine bronze peacock curl. So I'm just going to take out two of these. I've totally fucked up here. <laughs> you still having problems, Derek?
So there's our peacock curl. So I'll tie that in. And now basically I'm going to run the thread all the way back up, trying to keep everything nice and tidy, smooth as we go. And now wind our two peacock curls up together. Right up to towards the eye. Two two turns on it to tie it in, and then I just do a little a turn in front just to make sure it's not going anywhere. I'll we'll trim that off nice and tight. Now we can fold our our flashback forwards over the back of the fly, and it's. It's quite tricky. The one part you've got to check with this is throughout the tying process and ribbing the fly is that this flashback stays nice and straight on the back. So I always leave this bit. I don't cut this bit off the tag of flash until I've done the rib, until I'm happy with the rib, just in case anything goes awry. So I'm going to do a turn of the rib just on the tail, right on the bend, and then rib up all the way through. There we go. I'm going to tie the wire in. A couple of turns on that. And worry the wire off. And what I use my posh scissors on the wire. We'll break in a minute, hopefully. Extra strong bit of wire. Is that the UTC thread you're using, Lee? Yeah, this is UTC. Yeah, um, I've always liked the UTC threads, and they they seem to have gone. They went really rubbish for a while. Somebody said, I think I said on my last meeting, I think the there was two ladies who used to do the dyeing and the spooling, and they left. But I've just bought some some more from Kindale, and it's really good. It seems to be back on quality again. You know, back on form. So I'm really quite happy about that because I love it. It's, it. The colors are great. It's it's um, a nylon thread. It's I really like it, you know, it's great for spinning flat. It's it's a really a really nice thread I like. So um so that's our tag end of flashback type cut off. So I'm just gonna hold the thread up out of the way, maneuver our beard hackle back, and basically just create a nice neat head. And this this is just a, a universal, you know, the deal back is the universal nymph for small waters, reservoirs, anything. You say this is really good for coarse fish. It's just, a, I don't know what the fish think it is, but they just seem to work very well. So there we go, nice. You could build up the thread a bit here if you wanted to, to make a real head that pops. And there we go. But I've had, um, oh, I've had, these really good perch, roach, Rudd um, in size 14. I've always wanted to try and catch a tension. I've never had a tension on a fly. I'd love to get a tension on a fly. But... So... How about... Lee, how about dace? Got a... Would dace take no, it just on the sure surface? I've never, tried, I've never tried it for dace, but I'm I'm quite, quite sure they'd have it, especially size 14. This is the size 12, so... Yeah. But I don't know how well you can see it. But if you can see the there's the really nice sort of subtle flashback to it. I can I can see that yeah, I can see the flashback. Yeah. 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 So well that's our first pattern. That it's interesting where you where you tied the, the beard on um over the front of the hook because yeah. uh, several years ago I saw one of the branch one of the guild branches it did exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, I can't remember which branch it was but um right yeah. i've been doing it for several years now i know i showed chris reeves it i know tom bird at draycott he ties all his deal backs like this yeah. now i yeah. started off when i started experimenting with it i started trying to tie the beard <clears> hackle <throat> in underneath the hook and have it coming out because then that would make sense but then you sort of end up with a a sort of out of skew it's sort of lower on the front and higher at the back so that's why yeah. i do yeah but it seems to work right it's, it's not you know 
it's just another technique and it, it yeah. makes for a nice neat head and yeah it I, looks I, nice I, and neat i just find it easier it saves messing about at the end you all you do is fold it back and tie the head and away you go so so that's number one anyway what can I, I sorry I can i ask struggle you struggle when tying a size 18 with a beardy tackle that would yeah. that be perfect yeah absolutely yeah yeah what was the size um your fluorescent um pink what was that's the size seven, that, um it's set seven oh 70 denier sorry 70 denier okay thank you so this thank is you. the the utc it's a great cut it's a real it's utc bright, okay it's a real bright oh. spot. It, you know it's a really bright pink so but yeah Right, thank you. I've got everything organised here, hopefully. So now I will go to, I've got another UTC, a black one. So the second fly is another deal back, but it's a slight difference. What we've got here is a, is a holographic deal back. So it's a, a, a small holographic rib. But then what I've done is I haven't um, sort of cut the, the holographic off and I've, I've whip finished a holographic head on it. I don't know if you, how well you can see it or not. But so it's a, it's got using tinsel for the head as well. So this is there is a theme to this. It basically every pattern is is a tinsel sort of theme to it. You'll see. If there's only one pattern that's an odd one out that hasn't got tinsel. In it, I think so. So we go for the same same hook again. Doing lots of different stuff with tin, tinsel. So there is our size 14 uh, nymph hook again. It's to say size 14, but it equates to a size 12. So they're big. So I'll just move me that's out of the way. So this time we're going for a... a cheaper tail on. So that's the great thing about deal backs as well is these sort of nymphs is it's um you can use cheap Indian hackles, you know, you don't you don't need any genetics. Just nice stiff cheap cock hackles. So I'm gonna get some thread on again. Same as before, just sort of stop in the thoracic region, just so we can get our get a cock hackle. <laughs> I'm going to pull off all the stuff at the bottom we don't want. Just unzip that off. So, so obviously before I do pull off the fibres for the beard hackle, I want to take them from this side of the feather because they're, they're already facing in the right direction. It saves me having to manipulate them around. Obviously, the more you manipulate hackle fibres, the more out of line they're going to get. So, so there you go. So zip them off. It's not, I haven't, really, I haven't really got enough there. I'll do it again. Let's get some, get a bigger bunch. Sorry about that, Derek. Playing about. Right. I managed to get it back on my laptop. Oh, well done. How much swearing did that take? No. <laughs> the thing was, could you hear me swearing? No, not, not really. No. So, so there you go, same drill as before. So just tighten up on that and then tease it down so you get fibers either side of the hook. And then run the thread up towards the eye. And hopefully, all your little beard knuckle fibers will just stay tight underneath the eye. There you go. And we can run back down. A nice flat cut. We don't want any any uh, lumps and bumps in the in the body of the fly. So you keep everything nice and smooth, and then any bumps sort of get you know exaggerated as the, as the the construction of the fly goes on. You know, so you want to keep everything as smooth as possible. So there we go. So we will get some more fibres for the tail. Unzip them. Offer them up for length. Excuse the state of my hands as well, by the way. For a nice flat cut again. So now we want our, our rib material, which is going to be our tinsel, our holographic tinsel. 
I find it a lot easier to use. You'll see there's another fly later as well. Where I'm using um, tinsel in a bobbin holder. It's a lot easier to use if it's in a bobbin holder for what we're going to do. And I thought we we don't it's in a red one, so we do a chart chartreuse one for something different. So all I'm going to do is what you would normally do: tie the rib material in, run the thread to the bend of the hook, and what you don't if if I let this sag down there, you know, within ten seconds, that's going to be wrapped around that. So this is where the stick it in your this sort of a material holder, just to keep it out of the way. And got two more strands of peacock curl. Fine peacock curl, don't want to too fat. Really. So, tie that in at the bend. Run the way up. Beard seems to have sprayed out a little bit, so I just try to do that. Out. But we do want to try and keep the head nice and small on this because we've got um got more to do at the end, so try and keep away from the eye. So I'm gonna wind we've got a curled body. I'm going to stop there. Hold the material. I always like to hold the material up when I'm tying in. I think I, I said about this last time because it's just easy. When you go to trim off, you know you're not going to cut your thread. If you're cutting the material on top of the hook shank, you know you're not going to cut the thread, which is never nice. So there we go. So now we're going to wind the rib. So I'll just reel in some of this tinsel. So nice even turns. A bit close. So and then we're going to tie this in. I want to tie this in on top of the hook shank because I don't want it getting in the way of the beard hackle. Tying the tinsel in on top, and then we give ourselves some more slack on the tinsel, and put that back in the material holder. Not dropping everything. Straight on top. <coughs> now, so now we can do our beard hackle. Hold the beard hackle back. So I want to keep the thread wraps to a minimum because we don't want the head being too big. So now it's just a case of whip finishing with the thread. Trim that off. And I normally just put a little spot of varnish on the um, on your thread wraps, and it just sort of helps glue the the tinsel to the head as well. Give yourself plenty of slack, plenty of uh, spare tinsel to play with. Try and get rid of any twists. So basically, I'm going to offer this up, put it in the whip finish tool, and just basically exactly the same as if you were with a thread. Try and keep your, I always call it this my, my bobbin hand and, and this my vice hand. So keep your vice hand loose. So you always sort of feed in tinsel into the whip finish you really don't want to keep this you don't you want it to lock up tight just keep it nice and loose and you want at least sort of four or five turns and then very gently you can see where all the twists in this where, where you've been winding you get a lot of twists so all those twists have got to pull through you've got to be sort of very gentle just get all them get it all through and then you can put it tight and there you go, you've got a nice tinsel head. And when that's varnished, it really, really pops. It really shines. Um, you could trim it off with your scissors, but literally it's getting in, getting in really tight to, to, you know, you have no tag end. So the, these little razor blades are brilliant for, for trimming these. So you can get really close 
And there you go, nice and neat. Job done. So this is this is a technique, you know, you, you don't just, this isn't just for deal backs, you can do this on anything. There's another pattern I'm going to do later where we're, we're literally just do the tinsel at the end without it being tied in. And that is a bit trickier because you've, it, you haven't got a tethered end, you know, it's, it's just all on the, all in your hands, you know, but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit anyway. So that's a cracking little pattern. There's one bit of beard hackle sticking up in the air, but apart from that, so there you go. So we get on to the next one, which is um, a very simple pattern. Um, basically, a black and peacock spider. I caught more fish on this last year than anything else on the small waters, even like some of the big fish waters like Diva and Abington. It was just awesome. And I'm, I'm convinced it's because um, of the alder beetle population exploit. There's loads and loads of alder beetles down here um, at the moment. They seem to be everywhere. So I'm convinced the black and peacock spider is a real good one to have. This one's got a nice little this pearl butt to it. But it's just a very simple pattern. Was it? Um, oh, very underrated. Yeah, uh, Tom Ivans, wasn't it? Tom Ivans. So it's a southern spider. So so that's good. That's good for me. <laughs> uh, let's get the stuff out for that. Hopefully I've got everything organised, all in bags, ready to go. So this should be very minimum. Me back and forth, hopefully. Try to be organised. And what um, I have done with this in the past as well is um, sort of lead it. I put some, you know, turns of lead. I, I like using lead foil, and if I can't get lead foil, I will literally just get lead wire and like a, you know, and roll in pin it flat and get the lead foil if you, you know. So you can put a bit of lead in it if you want. Um, this is going to be tied on another grip hook, um, a nymph and egg fly hook. This is a size 18. Um, again, they're, they're lovely hooks, but the sizes are just weird. This sort of, it's like a heavy sort of size 14 wide gape. It's, it's weird, the, the sizes, but it's, it's a lovely hook. But failing that, what I do tie them on um, is the, the full in mill heavyweight grub hooks are really nice in size 14. You want it nice and small, so I, I wouldn't go bigger than a size 14 grub hook. Um, so we get one of these. So this is an 18, but it's a big 18, so it's it's just not to be barbless. I'm slowly trying to go completely barbless, but it's not. I'm struggling a bit. It's not as easy. So this is a lovely. Is this quite? It's quite a heavy hook. Really nice wide gate to it. Really wickedly sharp these hooks. So they are. They're good stuff. So we're going to go with a black UTC thread. And like I said, on the theme of sort of tying things in first, I, I'm a great believer that um, tying hackles in last, you know, especially if you're tying them in by the stem, makes a big bulge in the head. You know, you've sort of spent all that time making a pretty fly and you have a, you know, make it messy at the end. So I'm going to tie this hackle in first. We're going to use a a chevron um, hen pheasant dyed black. So we could just use a um, you know hen cape, but th these are there's lovely. They're so soft, you know. They, they really matter mobility under the water. They really are very soft. So so basically, little soft tackle. I've already stripped the. Uh, the rubbish off the stem. That one looks a little bit big, actually. It's a big one. I prepared a few earlier, as they say. Just to... there we go. So I've just taken all the fluff off the stem. So we're tying this in. I'm going to moisten my fingers and put all the fibres forward. You know, this isn't this isn't going to be a, a water hem blower. We want quite a few fibres on it. And then I'm going to tie this in by the tip. So we don't want to tie it in right at the point where the fibres come out. You want to tie it back a bit. So you've got a bit of a bit of wiggle room. So you've got about, you know, a quarter to half to turn the pack ball before you actually get to the fibres. So a bit of spit on it hopefully holds all the fibres out of the way. Get that tied in. So there we go. That's the hackle tied in. But the word of warning with tying hackles in first is, You've got to make sure that hackle's right. 
because otherwise when you get to the end of the fly and it's the wrong size or whatever you know you've basically messed it so you've got to make sure you have your tying in is the right other way so trim that off with a flat cut again and then we want our a nice pearl butt so this is quite a wide pearl this is a, a 12th of an inch so it's quite a chunky run so i don't know if this you know takes an air bubble or something so this is a nice wide tinsel this gives that a little bit of flash so i'm going to tie that in and i'm just going to go to the bend It seems to have a lot of peacock hull patterns, I think. So there we go. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wind a little pearly butt, but I'm going to do about three or four turns, literally right on the same spot. So I'm keeping each turn exactly on the same spot. So we're creating like a, a sort of a, a flash lump. And then we can tie that in. Run the thread up a little bit, just to make sure it can't slip out. And then cut that off for that. Careful you don't cut the other hole. And again, peacock curl. Actually, no, there's only one more peacock curl pattern after, after this, so I'm getting bored of peacock curl. So I'm going to take out, I'll take out three fibres of peacock curl, but this, this is from an eye, this one. I want this bushier. I want this quite a, quite a fat fly. So I'll roughly line up the tips. Tie this in. But literally, I don't know if many of you guys ever fish um, like you know, like Diva Springs and whatnot. You end up with the a lot of the time, people are fishing with all manner of tungsten weighted stuff and, you know, really heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes the fish, especially the brownies, they're only like a foot, two foot under the water. You know, everyone's fishing way below them. And something like this, you just you just nobble them every time. It's great. So here we go. So we've got our three strands of peacock curl. So I'm going to run up. I've got a nice big, quite a chunky body on this. It's going to, so I've gone up to the eye and I'm going to go back down again. And then back up to the eye. When it's wet, when it sort of, you know, goes a lot slimmer when it's wet. I'm going to tie that in. Again, holding the materials up upwards so we don't, there's no danger of cutting anything when we trim out. And then we get our hackle pliers. And I'm just going to catch in on that stem. We've got our little handle to grip onto. And the moisten fibres, tease them all back. Nice and neat. So we've got a few turns on this. It's not. It's not like a. Super sparse, you want a few fibres in there. One stray one, so there we go. Now I'm going to tie in the stem. Hold everything back and then nice neat little head. And there we go. So I've still got the um, stalk in there to cut out. A little bit of varnish just to help seal the head. So I've got the stem still in there somewhere. Even if I can't see it, you can you can feel it. If you if you can't see the stem, you can. Dab your finger, you can isolate it because you can feel it. So we'll just get that out. 
trim that off nice and tight. He says. Okay. So that has been still waters. That has been a cracking pattern, which has only been surpassed recently by um, our next pattern that we're going to tie, which is another spider as well. So, so this is a little, you know, it, it's small black. It ticks a lot of boxes, and especially if you're in areas where you've got the, the older beetles everywhere, like we have here at the moment, they just, they're everywhere. So, like a little blue beetle that's about four or five mil big. And I'm convinced the trout are switching on to them. So, well, there we go. So, there's that one. So, now our next spider pattern, I started fishing because I'm on my Salisbury district. I'm basically I'm not allowed to fish spiders on any of the chalk streams until. Well, nymphing time, which is, you know, sort of later in the year sort of thing. So I started fishing a woodcock and hair lug on the still waters. And I, I love it. It, it was just amazing, especially if there's any um, sedges hatching anywhere. Again, this is tied on a full in mill 14 grub hub. Um, I've gone sort of traditional, you know, proper hair, proper woodcock. It's um, it's not Purcell. It's um, oh, Langley's um pro proper silk um but it's it's not the proper 6a the their 6a well i'll show you in a minute it seems to have it seems to have gone a bit funny but um but this is a little cracker you know traditional but just tied a bit heavier for the still waters um and then we had a competition up at eleanor with the fly dressers guild and i did a slightly bigger one so this is like a size 12 and it's just a woodcock and hair lug but with a gold rib and this thing was just it's such a game changer. I basically won the competition. Um, my teammate who I gave one of these to, he got the biggest fish of the day. And it, it was a really tough day. And this absolutely was just nailing everything. So it's definitely a good one to have. Um, so we're going to go We'll go with the same hook again. It's a size 14, but it's basically a size 12. And I've got mad tiny. I, I love tying with um, woodcock. It, it is lovely. Lovely material to work with. I'll just make it clear up as I go. So the silk wise, Langley, um, it's Morris silk now. This is their 6A what should be their 6a which to me is it's way too pale it's a very um well it's not quite right i don't think not as the purcell's imitation this is their 19 which is a lot closer so I'd, i've been using that a lot and the morris silk i'm sure it used to be langley's is um it's really good quality it's really strong it's easy to tie with it's it's nice and fine um obviously you want a, a small bobbin holder little tiny bobbin holder it makes it a lot easier to work with um but it's good fun to tie with i, I enjoy tying with the proper silks and you don't need to but it's just you know nice so first thing i'm going to do like i say as of, as of before i'm going to tie the hackle in first so here is our our woodcock wing so we're looking for one of the outer covert feathers up here so i want one that is about She's got fibers about the length of the hook. So I should have found one of these earlier. So, that should be something. so I've just pulled out a covert feather. So we're going to get rid of the rubbish. The coloration on these are lovely. It is really buggy. And I'm sure I'm sure the fish it's a, it's like a sedgy sort of although this one it, it could be a bit of a shrimp you know shrimp sort of thing. So there's our fibre length, so I can check that against the hook. So that's pretty good. We're just a, a touch longer than the hook. And now what I do because I, I only want two turns of hackle. So basically, if you have, I've sort of worked out about five to six mil in length on the stem. That is basically two turns. So I know that my when I come to wind it, I can tie it in there 
that's my two turns. That's my tying end point there to finish off. So I've got it. It's all mapped out, really, basically. So, like, I, I don't need to be as anal doing this because it's it's a dubbed fly and it's quite a heavily dressed one. So, but I always remember Oliver Oliver Redwood's show. When he, whenever he tied spiders, he would offer the feather up to the hook first. Obviously, if you're tying something like a partridge and orange, every thread wrap is, you know, visible and you need to be a bit anal about it if you're, you know, taking pride in tying them. So, but this way, basically your first thread wrap is tying in the hackle. So, so there we go. So, and then we cut that off with a nice flat cut again. So we've got no laps and bumps. And now we need a rib material. So I'm just going with a, not a holographic, just a flat gold. This is a Sabai dark gold, fine gold tinsel. So we'll just chop some out. Off. I think this I've got I did a I did a step by step for the for the gill fly dresser on this one as well. So it should be in our next our next fly dresser magazine when it comes out. So I'm gonna run the to sort of in the middle of where the barb would be. So put that in there, hopefully. It's not gonna stay there. And then I'm just gonna get some hairs here dubbing. This is some stuff I've I've mixed up myself from a mask. Well, I must admit that um, that Kindale, they do some really nice dubbing, hairs ear dubbings and uh, natural stuff. They do some really nice ones, squirrel and hair mix and squirrels. I got, got, I'll be using a squirrel, a squirrel dubbing in here in a minute ago. In a minute, I mean, sorry. Right. So there's our, I only need a tiny bit. I'm not going to be, it's not going to be as sparse as, you know, it's going to be quite a heavily dressed one. I'm not going to. Uh, Go super sparse on this. So with the dubbing, I'm just looking for that spike at the top. Slide it up the hook. Get a few turns on. We've got our anchor point. Now you can tease it out and I'm happy with that. Rib all the way up to where you've tied in the hackle. And then with the with the gold rib, I'd like to do one or two turns right on the bare hook at the back before you start spiraling up through. And there we go. So just it's a woodcock and hair leg, but just with a, a gold rib and a... Oh, nice and tight. Langley thread early. Sorry? We'll get Langley thread. Langley, yeah. That's it. That was the... Yeah. This this is Langley. I think it's, it's run by... It's a company called Morris now. Oh, is it? Yeah, I'm sure... And that's Morris. I'm sure they have overtaken Langley. Because uh, it was a, a elderly gentleman, a lady from down near Barry Island, Roos, yeah, doing it. Yeah, and I thought they um, died. And I, uh, did, I think this company, because they they always used to have a stand at the BFFI, didn't they? In the first um, in the first hall, I believe. They did. They did. Yeah. Shot of Purcell's colour chart stolen one year. Oh really? Yeah, uh, which was a bit nasty. Yeah, yeah, there was some, well, they always have, they're getting loads of stuff stolen there now, aren't they? But we say they do this, this is supposed to be the 6A imitation, but it, it seems way too pale to me. Um, How do you get it now then, Lee? This stuff? Yeah. Uh, if you go on the website, Morris Silk's website. All right. I can ping a link on the on the WhatsApp 
uh, page later if you like. Okay. Um, they've they've got all they've got all the colours, you know, the sort of um, snipe and purple, and you know. But yeah. you do have to sort of look through. They're they're not very helpful unless you phone them up and ask. They're, you know. Yeah. But I, I do enjoy time with the silks. I must admit, they're a good fan. So now we're gonna we're gonna wind our woodcock. So we'll see how, how right I've got it. So I'm gonna tease the fibers back. So this is big. This is on a size twelve. So it's a big spider. But I just couldn't believe how how well it worked. It was awesome. So there's one turn. There's our two turns. And then I'm not I'm not trying to tie on a on a bit of stem that's got you know loads of fibers on it. It's a lot easier tying a bare stem in when you're finishing than it is tying in a stem with which has got loads of fibers attached to it. And there we go. So just Sweep the fibers back, neat little head. Because I, I, I've got a load of old purse purcells still, but um, a lot of it, you know, you go to pull a whip, whip finish tight or something, and it just snaps. I think it's just a bit old and rotten, you know. And it's nice to have a sort of strong stuff that you've got faith in. That. Have you tried the YLI stuff? No. That is a lovely silk. It's got the same, a lot of the, I got a chart match compared to the Purcells. All right. A little bit thinner. It doesn't fray like Semperfly or any of the other silks as much. Yeah. And it's okay. really, really nice. It's called YLI. You can get it from the normal sewing shops. All oh, right, I'll have to have a look. 100% silk. They do it in 1,000 metre spools as well. Right, wow. Well. Yeah, I'm not that impressed that the Semperfly stuff isn't it's really dull and fluffy. It's I don't it's, it's horrible. Been, yeah, it's, it's not horrible. Like, I got in trouble with that because um someone put up on one of the forums. They said, What's the best thing I can do with a Semperfly silk? And I said, throw it in the bin. Oh dear. <laughs> and she got a little bit upset. Oh dear. <laughs> um, but there we go. So if anyone enjoys your nymphing. This is a cracker. Just fish it, um, midge tip, floating line, um, really slow or just, you know, static or really slow twiddle. And it's just awesome. I've, this has been a real game changer for me, fishing this fly. So yeah, absolutely whooped at, at Eleanor. I think there was there was hardly any fish caught that day and nearly all of them just come to this. Um, it was really, really cool. So... That's a that's a cracking little fly to have a play with, and they're fun to tie as well. I get carried away. I end up putting my hands on. Them. So all right, let's peel all that away. Oh, right, here we go. There's some of that uh, Kindale. That's a squirrel and hair blend. They're really nice. There's, they've got some really nice dubbins that company, and they're a lovely couple as well. We met them at, met them at the BFI. They're really nice. <coughs> so the next one we're going to do is a. Pattern um I came up with oh years ago now. It was um it was for far more, fitting far more. So it's basically a black cruncher, um, a black and silver cruncher with um, as you can see, slightly different, sticking to the tinsel beam. It's got a it's got a silver head, which is a tinsel head. So it's um a very simple pattern, but doing the head can be quite fiddly. And I'm quite annoyed now because um Young young Ben Beckwith can tie these twice as well as I can now, which you know. But um the this is pattern has been adopted by several of the um sort of reservoir teams. It's it's a you know it's a it's one worth copying and trying because it definitely works well. Um so again with this one we're gonna go with the size 12. You'll see that I like using a lot of size 12s. I think a lot of the anglers, a lot of the, you know, still water comp anglers and whatnot, they they stick to size tens at the, all the time, you know, size ten, size ten. So if you've got, you know, a fly that's slightly smaller or whatnot, I think you've got the edge on them a lot of the time because when you look at what the fish is eating a lot of the time, it is small stuff, isn't it? So there we go, a bit of black thread on there, same hook as last time. I'm going to use, I've got a chevron black hang cape here so i'm gonna 
We only want quite a small hackle for this one, quite a small fibred hackle. We don't want, don't want the fibres too long. Come off. So there we go. Yeah, that's about perfect. So tease off some rubbish to expose the stem. And then I'm going to tie that in again, hackle first. So the convex side of the feather we want against the hook shank. And I want to tie it in so that I'm not tying it in directly on the point where the fibers start. We need to be back here somewhere. So we've got a bit of bare stem sticking out over the eye as well. Basically, so our first half or quarter turn doesn't have any fibers in it. It makes for a much neater. This can be a bit fiddly sometimes getting it to sit right. Because what you don't want is uh, when you start winding the hackle for it to twist on you and then I'll be go with that. Hopefully that'll be all right. So the other beauty of tying in hackles and things like this first is if you tie this hackle in last, you're only literally tying in like two mil max you know even if you fold the hackle stem back at the end you're tying in a small amount of hackle stem you're tying this hackle in first i could literally run the thread right to the right to the hook bend you're tying in so much stem it is ne never ever going to fall out so that's the hackle in place so i'm going to run the thread towards the bend uh with the tail is um basically a Indian cock again, just dyed black. So, so we we'll line up some fibers. The tips lining up, and zip that off. Offer them up for length. So I want my tail to be about you know the length of the shank. Randy. You have to be careful when you're coming in with these tied in first, when you're coming in to cut things that you don't cut the, the hackle. It's easily done. So there we go. So now it's a very simple dubbed body. So we're just going to use a little bit of black rabbit. I always like to use um, bits of uh, bits of waist song clip strip are really handy that's really great dubbing you know if there's any small off cuts just rip a few bits off just give it a mix and a tease up and then get some of that on the thread you could use rabbit then lee sorry you could use, you could use rabbit for if you had it as your yeah, dubbing yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's basically it's just rabbit dubbing. That's all it is. Yeah, and um, Wopsy do a nice rabbit dubbing, but I just think you know if you've got little waist bits of zonker strip lying around, it just you can use them up as dubbing. It saves wasting them. So you know, a nice skinny sort of a nice skinny abdomen. And what I like to do is I literally. We've got a thorax happening here, but I basically like to dub all the way up to the front of the the fly. And then you've basically got a nice foundation there for doing what we're gonna, you know, to tie on for our thorax bit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some silver, silver wing buds. I've got some of this um, silver and gold tinsel. So I cut two bits of that out. So I want it so that the silver side, because this is silver and gold, the silver side is touching the fly. So when we fold it forwards, we're going to have the silver side exposed. So I'll just tie that in. Got a bit difficult to see if it's in the correct position with this stupid blue ball in the way. I'll just rotate that around there. So there we go. So there is wing buds. Yeah, 
So just try and make sure they're on the sides of the fly. Now a little bit more of your rabbit for a thorax. Only literally a tiny, tiny tiny little bit. There we go. We've got to keep make sure we keep the eye clean because we've got we've got quite a lot going on. We've got to tie in, got to tie in the wing buds, we've got to hackle to tie in. Plus then we've got to do our silver head to so try and keep sort of thread wraps to a minimum. So I'm going to fold that silver cheek forward. Fold this silver cheek forward. Trim these off. And then I'd like to, I was always taught, um, Charles Jardine always said that when you're winding a hackle, before you wind, it's like um, origami when you crease paper. You want to do the same to the hackle stem. So before you wind, fold it right back so you're putting a crease in the stem. Then you can start winding. Mm -hmm. So we just want about two or three turns on it. Not going to go mad. That'll do. Right, tie that in. Mm. Fold it all back. Neat. It's a small head. We want the head as small as possible because we've still got stuff, quite a bit to do. Finish. Tight. I always like to support the hook. When I pull my whip finish tight, I don't just like to do a whip finish and cut off. I always like to pull it tight. I always support the hook. Pull it tight. Especially if you're using these, these hooks, don't worry so much, but especially if you're using lighter wire hooks, you know, give it give it the support before you you know put a little weight on it. and braid you should just be able to ping that hackle out there we go so now same drill as before we've got a a bobbin holder with silver tinsel in just flat silver tinsel just say by silver tinsel so we're gonna this is quite fiddly but it's it's worth yeah, I think you can you can do it to any fly. You know, it's just it's just putting a a finish effect, a nice tinsel head on a fly. So basically, I've got myself loads of slack here. I've got loads of tinsel. So this is the tricky bit. Is you're basically you've you've got no tethered end. So I'm going to hold on to that end. I'm going to put it. In the whip finish tool as if as if it you know was attached to the fly so i've only got i've got my figure of four there in the whip finish tool so now i'm going to offer it up on the crossover point of the four offer, offer it up to the fly and then just start winding again try and keep the turns nice and light don't go if you go pulling things tight then you're never going to pull this through that will never go through if you pull it tight so tease it through tease it through you need at least a minimum of like four turns, basically. Otherwise, it'll probably come undone. So start putting some pressure on it. Put it tight. It's a beautiful, it's a lovely effect. And then with the razor blade again, because I always struggle to get the scissors right in there. Let's just ping that off. Mr. missed the name of the fly, Lee. This is just a black and silver cruncher. It was, it was in, um, it featured in FF and FT, oh, yeah, probably about 10 years ago now. But it's a, it's a little cracker. A lot of my flies, they're just, it's just simple, you know, very minimum. There's no rib, it's just, it's just dubbing some bits of silver, you know, there's not a lot to it. But it just, they work well, so. 
and I, I love the the idea. You know, it's just uh, adding tinsel heads to things is just a bit different, isn't it? So, so yeah, There's that's the aiming point. Sorry, it's an extra aiming point. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of bit of bling to aim on. So, right, let's tidy that out of the way. Um, so the next one is our our only pattern without any tinsel on it. So it's basically um, a phrasing nymph. Um, uh, it's uh, originally tied. Um, is it Gordon Fraser, wasn't it? Um, it was originally tied on. I think he was quite specific at the time. On these, on like a size fourteen long shank hook, which is all. It's all you know. It's it's lovely, but. Um, it's a bit big, I, I find. So I like to make them a little bit smaller. I think on if you tie them on the 14 long shank, it's a really good um, damsel imitation, you know, immature damsel nymph. I like to do them a little bit smaller. So this is on a size 12 wet. And instead of uh, the ordinary phraser nymph, was, I think I can't remember what sort of thread it was, but th there's an olive phraser, uh, which has got an olive dubbed thorax. They're not olive thread, so they're sort of a, like a golden olive thread's quite nice. But this one I've done with uh, like a chartreuse thread, and it it really you know it's, catches the eye. Just that little bit of chartreuse, and you know, and this is um it's a brilliant pattern for uh, lake olives when you get uh, lake olives about. It's it's awesome for that. So it's just it's a nice pattern, and it's got a nice technique for doing the, the legs as well. So I just thought we'd add that one as well. So. I use I use a bar hook for this one, so it's another grip, but it's just a, a wet fly size twelve. I like quite a light hook. Um, I think a lot of people tie flies on you know much too heavy hooks. There's a Gavin Frail, a Pittsford angler. He always swears by you know most people are using B one seven fives. He always sticks with the B one seventies because um, the the lighter the fly, the more naturally it's gonna it's gonna act in the water. You know it's um. It's not just a heavy lump, it's uh, drifting around in the current. And... Mm. So here we go. So we got some really bright fluorescent yellow thread. So always remember when you tie these, leave a long tag end. So I'm giving myself lots of slack because the tag end is the rib. So I'm gonna start winding some thread on. Normally I would pull the thread up and wind, but because this is gonna be a rib, I want it to stay out of the way a bit. So I'm just gonna, Keep it down out of the way. And the body um, is, is basically a pheasant tail, but this is a, a hem pheasant, hem pheasant center tail. So I think the hem pheasant is really nice. It's, it's a, I think it's a much more natural sort of a colored, nymph colored sort of feather anyway. So we're gonna do usual drills with this. Line up the tips, I think I've probably got Probably got too many, but I just think. probably want about six fibers. I think. Something like that. So there we go. Line the tips up. I'm going to cut that off. So we want quite a nice short tail. So, ah, see what I said. There you go. It's all tangled round. I didn't put it in me. Older. Take your eyes off something for a minute and they go out of control. There you go. So I'll pop that in the holder this time. Hopefully my tails haven't gone out of alignment too much. So there we go. So I'm going to offer that <coughs> short tail. Try and keep it bang on top of the shank. Check the, the tail length. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to pull it tight and I'm going to wind right the way back up to the eye. There we go. And I'm going to wind this body material in the opposite direction. And then I want this, these fibers to stay flat. So if I just keep passing it around and grabbing it each time, it's going to, like, like the thread does, it's going to gain twists. So basically, I want to let go, do a turn, let go. So I'm going to put my finger on it, go around, do another turn, put my finger on it, let go. 
and then that way it will stay it will stay flat and untwisted and hopefully i can keep it flatter and thinner and the beauty of that is as well if you you know you've got more control you're holding it you don't want it coming and coming to right at the last minute so there we go right up towards the hook i'll do a couple of turns on the material the turns in front of it pin that off nice and close now we can rip with our the start of the thread There we go. So basically, this fly is, it's all, all it is, is hem pheasant and a tiny smidge of dubbing. That's it. So now we want, we want a few more fibers, say about 10 fibers. Um, we need, we have some little legs. So I'll get about 10 fibers. Line up the tips again. Trim that off. sort of similar technique to what we did with the beard hacker earlier i'm going to offer that up on top of the shank if there are legs what we're going to do we're going to tie this in and we're going to fold half, half the bunch one side half the bunch the other side so you're gauging the length of your how long you want your legs to be some people would try and do this the other way so what they would do is have it the other way around so you would tie it in like that and then use that to make the, the thorax cover and then fold them back but trying to judge the length that way is a lot more difficult so it's a lot easier if you do it this way and you can judge the length of the legs from word go so run that back to where you want your thorax to begin and this is more that Kindle Devin, which is lovely. This this is the squirrel. Lovely, nice. Really buggy. Tiny little touch of that. This creates a nice buggy little thorax. Probably you miss anything. This, these thread wraps show through so easily because right? it's so bright. So there we go. So now we're up to the head. So now carefully try and tease half the fibers one way, half the fibers the other way. Sometimes you just put your, your finger flat on the end of the hook. It just sort of squidges them either side. So there we go. So hold me thread up, use my fingers like I did with that beard hackle, get all the fibers back. There's always one that betrays you. And so there we go. Now we can fold the thorax cover forwards. I think there was a trough pheasant tail as well, which was quite similar to this. I'm sure there's several patterns that are similar to this, but this is nice. There we go. Thorax cover up tied in. Turn that off nice and neat. Uh, nice neat head. Make sure that thorax cover, those ends are tied in neatly. What you don't want is for them to slip off. And... So there we go. Oh, this board thing, I lost a load of thread wraps and that was lucky. I didn't, thorax cover didn't come undone then. So I'm trying to give myself more slack with this blue board in the way. So there's our phrase up. Are the legs, Lee, are the legs sticking up above the thorax? Because it doesn't no, look no. too clear from here. 
they're sort of either oh they are there. they are down either side i can see them better yeah. like that thank you yeah yeah good but it's just uh it's a nice effect they're nice if you wanted to you could have them more sticking downwards it's just up to you. you can orientate them sort of how you like really but i'm pretty sure um the original Fraser, they were, they were sort of either side, you know, and they were tied originally on 14, 14 long shanks. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, they're, they're great, but they've got, it's quite a really small gate to them as well. You know, I just, I prefer the smallness, much smallness of this, but I also prefer, you know, it's got a, it's got a bigger gate. So I think it just fishes better. There's much more, you know, hookability to it as well. It's, and I, I'm, you know, so some flies you just prefer on other hooks because they just look better to you, don't they? If you just like the look of them on certain styles of hook. So I really like that on that one. And it's a nice size. So, so that's, that's, a, that's our phrase in it. So that's the only pattern that doesn't involve any tinsely stuff. Mm. So um, this is one I, I did, did a photo of. This is what a fly that I haven't actually tried yet. This is an experiment, but I really like the idea of it. So this is a Dr. Bell Grenadier, which was, um, I think it was in between the two world wars, wasn't it? Um, he, he was a, a guy on Blagden, and he was one of the guys who sort of started the serious nymph fishing, you know, instead of just pulling lures, he was one of the first people to start actually fishing nymphs and whatnot. So this is a Palmer pattern, obviously, brilliant top dropper, uh, Grenadier, but with a slight change to it, with a tinsel theme, I've done a, there's a flashback on it. So it's a it's a palmered flashback, which I thought was a quite a cool idea. And I'm dying to I'm at Draycott soon, so I'm dying to give it a go, give it a swim, see what happens. So we'll have a go at one of them. So with any sort of uh, palmered pattern like that, I like to have a, a much more sort of wider gape. So I'm gonna go with like a an egg fly hook. This is a size 10 egg fly hook. So it's like the um the Camasan uh, B160s. Or the bullet mill short shanks you have, but this is a size 10, so it's a size 10 um, gate <laughs> with, a, with a size 12 shank. So it's a short shank. So we're getting, and they're quite, they're, sort of, they're, not, they're not heavy either, they're sort of quite a light hook, so they're nice. <laughs> there we go. So I've got some. UTC again, some orange, fluorescent orange thread. So we're going to point someone. I'm just going to stop around there again. Because the same old thing, I'm going to tie the hackle in first. So, so the hackle we're using is basically like a ginger, a ginger cock. Got one already, so that should be about the right size. So I've taken all the fluffy stuff off the bottom. So the same as before. I want to tie this in so the convex side is against the hook shank. And we still have a little bit of bare stem protruding over from the eye. So I'll run the thread up a little bit, attach this in. especially with patterns like this you really got to make sure you've got the right feather this is why i specifically picked the right feather for this one because you're tying the hackles in first there's no going back you know once you've started the fly you can't change the hackle at the end if it's wrong so we'll trim that off there's our hackle tied in already so we're going to want a rib our rib material is going to hold the hackle in. I'm going to wind the hackle down, and our rib material going forward is going to hold the hackle in. So I've got some fine gold wire in. I'm wrestling at the moment. So there we go. So when I'm, it's a bit difficult because you're looking from the other way, but whenever I'm doing um, palmers and whatnot, um, I always tie the, the, the rib material, the wire, on the far side of the shank. I know it's closest to you. 
Um, so basically, I always tie it in so that if I'm winding the rib in my normal direction, the first half turn goes under the hook shank. So if I'm going to wind the rib in the other direction, I always tie the wire on my side. So the first half turn always goes under the hook shank. I don't actually know why, but um, it always seems to work well. I know I'm not the only person who does it, but I don't know. It works, so I'll stick to it. So again, we're going to go, we're going for our flashback. So we're going to take, this is some pearl tinsel, 14th of an inch. So you don't want anything too much. It's just a nice subtle. So we're going to make sure it's bang on top of the hook shank. There's our flashback tied in. We've got some, um, obviously, uh, it's a seal spur, traditional seal spur. So it's some Steve Cooper seal spur. He's brilliant. His, his materials, his seal spur is awesome. Um, but I always like to mix colours. So I don't like to dive just one block colour where it's like orange or whatever. So this is obviously orange and ginger mix. So I just do a 50-50 and it's just... It just breaks it up. It just makes it a little bit different and uh, makes night for a nicer sort of blend. Seal spur is amazing. It's you know, especially when it's wet. You look at it when it's wet in the sunlight. It is amazing stuff. So I've probably got you know twice as much dubbing as I'm going to need in the end here. So I'm just going to strip it out. So I have to tease it up. Make sure it's all mixed. Moisten my fingers. Some people struggle with seal spur. It is um, it is a great, such a coarse material, but literally you just persevere. But a lot of people they'll they'll go for um, like waxes and whatnot. But literally, I've I've just touched it once and I've got it on the thread already. The thing is with seal spur, you really have to you know, push. Don't be afraid to push. You can be as brutal as you like with seal spur. Just really grind that spike in at the top. So if you were to try and do this with a with a, like a synthetic dub and you'd literally just kill it straight away. But the beauty of seal show and you can really, you know, be rough with it and it you're not going to damage it. So then once we've got our spike at the top, we've got our anchor point. Now I can really tease it up. Make our dubbing rope. And then a nice thin body. You don't want it wound up too tight. You want it to be a bit buggy. You want a few strands poking out here and there, it's the, the beauty of it. You want the bugginess of it. And that worked out, ooh, just about right. So here we go. So now we've got our flashback. So I'll fold that forwards, tie that in. Again, I'm not gonna cut off the waist of this until I'm until I'm happy that everything's gone right. Because if, if something doesn't go right and I need to go back, if I've trimmed that, I'm stuck. So. So there we go. So now I can get my hackle, fold it back, crease the stem like we did before. And then before I start winding the hackle, I want to get my wire in the correct position. So I will bring it around onto my side. And if you wanted to, do a, do a few turns just on the bare hook, you know, almost create a little gold butt on the, on the back if you wanted to. So my wire is in a good position to, to go. So I've got my hackle pliers. And I want to do a good sort of a two or three full turns at the front to create a nice a proper hackle that's going to push push the water and you know pulse the water. Um, especially if you're having this as like a bob fly, you know, top dropper. So it's creating a disturbance in the water. That good, you know, good couple of turns at the top will push some water. Now, when you're palmering this fly, you just need to keep an eye on the fact that the flashback isn't getting pulled around the other side of the hook. So just keep an eye on it. You can always maneuver it back. And that's it. So now I've got to the back of the fly. And this is where I take my gold rib and then wiggle it through to secure our hackle. So basically, you don't want to trap any fibres. The best way I find is to just wiggle and just be confident. Just keep winding. 
I think normally if you if you try and sort of be careful and avoid fibers, that's when you trap them. So just be bold, just wind through. Try not to keep snagging on them from in pearl you tiger. There we go. So now I can tie the ribbon. Try not to trap any fibers. You can jiggle that off. And trim off my flashback waist now. And then I'll just moisten my finger and thumb so I can tease everything back. Create a neat little head. Again, we've got the nice fluorescent orange thread, so that, that's got a nice hot spot. Hot head and it'll also burn through the the seals for a bit when it's wet so it'll really pop but i'm dying to get out and try this i must admit i've got high hopes for this one and then when i trim off the the stem for a on a palmer that is obviously like the weak point in the hook there so we don't want the palmer unraveling so I'm, normally i cut things off as tight and as neat as possible but i always like to leave a little bit you know a little bit sticking out because then it's sort of a, there's less chance of it pulling through but i don't want to cut any of these fibers so i'm not actually going to cut with my scissors i'm just going to open them up a little bit and then keep off the away from the hook a little bit and then just push through so then we haven't we haven't damaged any of the existing keep. and there we go so that is the flashback grenadier that that one's going straight in the fly box look forward to trying that and they say if you read up about it they, they don't actually know what um dr bell was trying to imitate with the grenadier they think blood worm but i don't know it looks quite sort of sedgy to me so i don't know but we see what the fish think anyway so so there's our flashback grenadier so we've only got two left to do now so um this was a pattern um it's always fascinated me I've, I've fished these for years but this is this is a new sort of variant um it's the poacher it's um it was originally a sea trap pattern i believe um obviously tied big like size eights and sixes um i believe it's still used quite a lot in scotland i think quite a lot of the scotch water is still quite like it um really good dropper fly and I've, I've just always liked the look of it so uh originally it was tied obviously with um like just traditional silk and the the butt sec the you know the flashy sort of bit here that which i've got as traffic light is um was like the 6a silk you know like a orange hot spot but i've gone sort of updated it a little bit and put a traffic light so that's red holographic tinsel with pearl tinsel over the top and it's just a, a lovely effect in some lights it looks greeny pearl some lights it looks orange and then sometimes the red shines through so it is you know as it says traffic light um it seems to have a good you know fish you know sort of uh, getting the fish's attention the old traffic light so um that's another one to try i had success with that last week in south Uist. what the poacher yeah oh Tied brilliant that though yeah, it's, a, it's a good, good little plant. I've, I've, I've used it traditionally on like still waters now it is um I've just thought about the look of it, you know. So, so I'm going to try this a bit smaller. You can do this one on a smaller hook, which is again, it's one of these weird grip nymph hooks. So it's it's a size bigger than what it says. So this is, it says it's a size 16, but really it equates to a 14. So, but I don't care about the size difference because they're good hooks. So. So the tail on this should be um, golden pheasant. The red feathers on the golden pheasant, but I'm getting lots of get lots of chevron material. So we've gone for a chevron 
pen pleasant dyed red, which works really well because it's, it's a lovely, soft, fluffy material and it's nice and red, so it does the trick. But first of all, we're going to do our hackle first again. So this is a, this is just a furnace hen. This is one from Mr. Cooper. So only what small. Um, don't want anything too big. There we go. So we've got a small furnace hen hackle. We'll get rid of the pale, fluffy fibres on the base. We don't want them. And this is used as a, a beetle pattern as well. It's a so we go black thread. Thread. We're just sort of stopping the thoracic region again. Because I'm tying the hackle in first. Turn it forward a little bit. Tie that in. Leave yourself a bit of bare stem exposed. If you don't, if you if you tie right up to the fibres, then when you come to wind, you'll go to fold the, the feather back to wind and you'll have like loads of unsightly straggly bits sticking out of the head because you've you've constricted fibres. This is why you always leave a bit of bare stem so you're not trapping fibres in. So we'll cut that off there. Run the thread to the back, so we get tying our tail. So, as I say, we're using this is another one that I'm. I've, I've fished the traditional sort of one, or ones with just ordinary orange, orange hot spots, but. I haven't actually fished this traffic light one yet, so I'm quite keen to give that a go as well. So we've got our it's a hen pheasant feather dyed red. So we'll slough off our rubbish at the bottom. And I basically just want enough fibres for a tail. So tease some off. Line up the tips. Pull them off. It's a bit heavy that tail, but I'm sure it'll be alright. So they offer it up. I'm happy with that. So, like I did before when I was doing the chalk string patterns, if ever you're you're tying a batch of flies and you want to check proportions, your scissors are a great tool. If you're tying flies. Um, the tail is always a good one. If the tail, you want the tail the same length as the shank, you can use your scissors to measure the shank and then go across to measure the tail. And you, you know you've got consistency there. If you're, if you're tying a batch of flies, you know, and you want them all to be the same, it's, it's not it's a good tool just to check consistency. You can also use it, use it for checking hackle length and all sorts, you know, just use your scissors like a pair of... A pair of sort of calipers. One fibre does not want to go. No. So, there we go. So I want to try and keep thread wraps to a sort of minimum here because I don't want it to be building up too much. So now we're going to do our traffic light. So we've got some red holographic tinsel and some pearl tinsel. That's medium red, 14th of an inch pearl. So we're tying what we're going to use last first. So we want the pearl, pearl first. So I'll just cut off a little bit of that. So I'll then do a turn. We're going to tie that in right at the back. Then we're going to take a bit of our red holographic tinsel. And then we're going to tie that in. And then I'm just going to run the thread forward just to get all these bits tidied in and out of the way. 
hopefully it'll make a nice smooth foundation. And then I'm going to get my red tinsel. I get it without disturbing anything else. And I'm just going to do a couple of turns right at the back of the tail, going up a few mil. You get about three or four turns of that. Tie that in. We only want a short section right at the bum of the fly. So we now we can trim that off. Now we've got our pearl tinsel and just go a nice thin layer over the red. And that will create our traffic light effect. Right. Tie that in. Trim off the waist. Tidy those, trim those, tidy those butts in, tie them in, make sure they're not going to come straight. Now I'm going to get a few more strands of peacock curl. I'll go for three again. We want this to be quite a, not worried about this being skinny, I want it quite bushy. The three strands of peacock curl. Cut the tips to line them up. Tighten right back by the, Traffic light. And now we can wind a nice bushy peacock curl body. We want to even go back a bit and there we go. I'm going to tie that in. Two turns on the material. Turn in front, trim off the waist, and get me hackle pliers. I don't want to go mad with this either. I'm only going to do like two turns, I think, on this. Crease the stem, moisten my fingers to pull, tease the fibers back. Um, do one more turn. Some of these hen pheasant uh, feathers have got really fine fibres. They're so fine, they're just, you know, add another turn. Just go with what it looks, looks right. Tease that back. Neat little head. And there we go. I've tied in well, I can be brave and just ping that out. There we go, it's a traffic light poacher. I, just, I really like the look of this. And then we've got one more, and that's me done, right? So, um, our last pattern is a, was a, a John White pattern, who was one of the um, great reservoir fishers from Buell. Um, him and um, Rob Barden and that, you know, they had a great sort of think tank of, you know, inventing flies and um, you know, amazing anorexic nymphs and that. So this is basically a pheasant tail. Um, this pattern didn't have the hackle. I've added the hackle. So it's basically a pheasant tail with a bright um, orange sort of flash of thorax. So there's our sort of, you know, tinsel dean bit to the fly. Um, but it's a simple pattern. It's basically a cruncher. <coughs> me. That was the bright orange thorax. So I just thought I'd add that one. Um, Really good pattern, so I shall we'll get one of those on. Um, so I'm going to use the same again. We're going to go with a size 12 
nymph hook again. Tidy this rubbish out of the way. When I'm finishing the pattern, I'm just throwing it all on the floor, so you're not going to have a job tidying it up. So again, we're going to do we're going to do our hackle first. I'm going to get some. He was traditionally tied this with red thread, so I'm going to stick to that red thread. And ironically, I've just been doing um research on a local chalk stream pattern to me um called the widely widely willy basically it was very similar it was the widely willy is basically um a pheasant tail um with a red sort of thorax and it, it was a very sort of similar looking sort of fly really um but just as a dry fly so it's uh, quite strange really so, got some sort of furnace and hackle again. Don't want to go mad, but a nice small feather. So this was tied. It was it was originally basically a pheasant tail nymph, but there's there's no movement in it. So I just think just add in, just add in that little pen feather. Just adds just that little bit more movement, mobility to the fly. Just gives it a bit more life than it would normally have. So, got a nice little furnace hen hackle there. And we'll tie that in. There we go. I haven't, I haven't had a hackle go wrong all night, so should I tempt fate? It's, Fingers crossed that be they'd all go well. It's led to the bend. And then I get me uh, a furnace, cheap furnace, Indian cape. So we'll get rid of stuff at the bottom. A nice clump of fibers for the tail. This is a little bit smaller further, but I'm sure we manage. So just line those up. So offer it up for length. So I'll do that. And we get our rib material, which is some uh, fine copper wire. Uh, we'll introduce that. Just going to run the thread forwards, get it all tied in and neat. And then being a pheasant tail, obviously we've got some seen better days this one, but it's nice fibres. Um, cock pheasant tail. So I'm only going to take out three strands of that. I want to try and keep it quite skinny. And I think a cool thing you could do with this, if you put some white breathers on it and made it into a muskins as well, that'd be a that'd be a cracking little pattern. So, so three strands strands of pheasant tail. Get that tied in right to the tail, run our thread forwards. And with like the uh, phrasing imp, I'm gonna wind our pheasant tail fibers in the opposite direction. And again, I don't want them twisting, so I'm going to put my finger on, let go. That just lets them unravel. Another turn, let go. Just keeps them all nice and flat then and stops them twisting up. Okay. 
I'm really going to go up to the go up to there on this one. Up to your thoracic region. We put a couple of turns on the material. Two turns, button up to it. Trim out the waist. I'm going to wind the rib material like I did before. I'm going to wind a turn, basically on the on the tail, and then wind up through the abdomen area. Just put a little bit of flash and a little bit of armor plate in so the trout teeth don't shred it. You can jiggle that off. Oh, come on. There we go. And now we've got a few more fibers, a bit more of a clump of pheasant tail fibers for a thorax cover. So I'll probably go for about six or seven. I'm gonna cut it. I'm, I'm holding on to the there's there's the tips. I'm holding on to the butts. So I'm gonna sort of cut it in half because we want the, the thicker part for the thorax cover. So I'm gonna tie that in on top of the shank there. And now we want the key to this pattern is the, the orange, the burning orange sort of flashaboo core to the thorax. So for that, I'm using some, um, it's basically some uh, like, you know, minnow pattern. This is a volume flash hair by say by, but it's basically, there's loads of companies do this sort of stuff, you know, basically orange flashaboo stuff. So I'm going to tie in, um, Sort of some multiple strands. I've got four strands here, so I want to, I want to double them up. So basically, I want to tie them in in the middle. So the easiest way to do that without messing around, I always find, is to literally just wrap the material around the hook shank and then just tie it in. So it's just easy. And then I'm going to run the thread to the eye. We've got our flash tied in. Before I start winding, I'm going to twist them together. What I'm going to try and create is so that they don't lie flat. It's nice if they're all crinkly. And so if I wind them up, then hopefully they're sort of more multifaceted sort of a flash to it. Well, that's the theory anyway. So there's our flashing thorax to it. Cut the turns on, turn or turn front. And I'm going to pull the thorax cover forward. This is where you've got to be a bit careful because you, you don't want to be firing loads of thread wraps tying this in because we don't want the bulk and we've still got the hackle to wind. So just make sure it's tied in nice and tight, minimum, minimal wraps. Trim that off. We left a little bit of a longer tag end on that, so it's, it's safe then. I, I know that we don't want to be firing loads of thread wraps on it. So now hackle pliers, fold to stem back. You can see where I've trapped some fibers there, because as soon as I fold it back, they're protruding over the front, so I didn't I didn't leave enough bare stem on that. They will go back, but. Oh, bam. Hackle pliers let slip. So literally just about two turns, just adds a bit of movement to the fly. That's it. Take like a look at that. Yeah, it's a uh, say. Um, it's. I originally found it in one of the. Um, oh, I can't think of his name now. Famous comp angler used to fish all the Benson and Edges and. Um, oh no. 
Anyway, it was in one of his books. And it's a, um, so it's a John White pattern from Buell. So, uh, there's this tip there somewhere. Then nice, neat little red head. See, it's a subtle fly, but it's got that real burning thorax to it. It'd be a brilliant, like, middle dropper, you know. But the other name for the crunch, I think we used to call it a magnet, didn't they? Because it just attracts fish. Anything like that's going to be a good fish catcher. And there we go, a bit of head cement on that. Um, but that just, it really catches the light. You just angle it right and it's got a real, real flash to it. Yeah, so there we go. That's me done. That's all. That's the patterns I had ready. I don't. I haven't got a clue what time it is. Um, it's quarter to nine. Is it? Oh, that's not too bad then. Yeah. And if you're happy with that, that's. Um, I, I was happy with that. I, hopefully, it was all in focus a lot better than what it was last time. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Good. You, you might find that with a, a, a blue t-shirt or a blue shirt, you wouldn't need that backing board. Yeah, yeah. You'd have, you'd have more room to work around it. Yeah, I'll get myself, a, but I haven't got, I'll have to get myself a blue shirt. <laughs> I don't make one. <laughs> well, look, this is a good opportunity to get myself a, um, a, 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 one. a club t-shirt, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have to send you 15 quid, won't I? Um, just as a just as a matter of interest, Lee, um, yeah. my granddaughter gave me a blue T-shirt or polo shirt recently with a an emblem of where the wild trout are. And it's not the sort of colour I would normally wear, certainly not for fishing. But, um, well, there you go. Uh, but it's a possibility that I will. But it's it looks a nice light blue colour. The only trouble is where your fly is in your vice, it would be yeah. right over the emblem. Right, so yeah. You'd have you'd have to wear it the other way around, really. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd lose time, you'd lose sight of what's written on it. I, I had a white shirt oh. on last time and it just didn't work because I think the, the white shirt it just reflects the light and bounces it, back. Yeah, white shirts not pink shirts apparently are quite good. So I've pink. Been told. pink, yeah, pink, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've seen pink, salmon pink. Yeah, yeah. No, the Ludlow Fly Tying Club polo shirts are on. Yeah, I'll have to get yes, one. Yes, that's one. right. Yes, yeah. you're right, Derek. Yeah. I'll have to get one. But yeah, if you want, I can um I can post some pictures and dressings if you want on the on the page if you like. I'll post the link for the Morris um silks, the fly tying silks. If you would please. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I I've got most of the flies photographed, but one or two of them I don't I don't know. I might have to do I'll probably do it tomorrow. Yeah, um, there's, no, yeah. there's no rush. Yeah. All right, mate. Brilliant. Is this a Bob Church pattern then, the one you've got? Yeah, Bob Church. yeah well done. Yeah. It yeah. was a Bob Church. It's Bob Church book I've got, one of his competition books. Yeah. Um, and it was just the pattern that sort of it sort of stood out on the page. So you sort of think if it stands out on the page, then you sort of think, well, it'll stand out to the trout. But yeah, no, it's in it's um it's just a nice subtle cruncher, but it's just got that real bing bling to it, isn't it? That real pop to the yeah. I like that word for flies pop. It's just, you know, yeah. it's a good descriptive word of, of something that really shows, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, was, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I was much happier with that one. So, Magic, thanks for tonight. Thanks, That's really. Very good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Really really enjoyed I'm, that. So, I'm sorry I cocked up the beginning. Well, you <laughs> did all right, mate. I think all you right. did okay. Well done. I think you did okay. Thanks, Julie. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, gents. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Very good. Very good, Derek. Very good, Lee. See you all next Thank week. Thank you. Yeah, Lee. Not mm -hmm. what we're doing here.
<laughs> I'll, I'll just get a 